Welcome to the A-Level Music Support Session for Submitting Grades in Summer 2020. The session is an overview of the principles set out by Ofqual after the announcement on 3rd of April on the process for submitting grades this summer for A-Levels. If you have any queries after watching this video, please use the customer portal on the Pearson website and there is a link at the end of the slides to do this. You can also join the Pearson Music community pages and ask any questions in this group. So please do join that group. The agenda is to give an overview of the current situation, look at the general principles set out by Ofqual for submitting grades, possible evidence that you may consider for A-level music when looking at the center assessment grade and the rank order, and then to look at an example of the process. To look at an overview. The announcement to shut schools and cancel the summer exam series was made on the 20th of March by the Secretary of State. And there would also be a calculated grade for candidates issued in July. It was also stated that further details would follow. As I'm sure you can appreciate, it is an unprecedented situation and it has taken a little time to confirm the process through discussions between awarding organisations, Ofqual and the DfE. On the 3rd of April, further information was given about the grades that will be awarded this summer. For every A-level subject, a centre is required to submit a centre assessment grade for each student. They will also need to give a rank order of students within each grade. What we'll do now is look at the general principles from Ofqual and look at this in a little more detail. The centre assessment grade will be submitted by the head of centre and is the grade that each student is most likely to have achieved if they had sat the assessments this summer. It is a professional judgment from teachers derived from the evidence held within your centre. But this is as far as possible in the context of current health advice. It is an holistic judgment, balancing the different sources of evidence that you will have available. The department and teachers will consider each student's performance over the course of study and make the judgment for the most likely grade each student would have achieved if they had sat the exam and completed any NEA task this summer. Centres should also assume that it is no easier or harder for a student to achieve any grade this year compared to previous years. You will also need to provide a rank order for candidates within each grade. For example, if you have four candidates achieving a B grade, then one would be the highest attaining or most secure candidate, two would be the next, and so on. If you have more than one teacher or cohort, then you will need to agree one rank order for all students within the centre taking the subject. You won't be allowed to have tied rank orders. For example, you can't have two candidates being given position one within a grade. The submission would be returned to the centre to be amended, and this can cause delays in the process. Once centres have submitted all of the grades and rank order, awarding organisations will use statistical standardisation. The model for this is being developed with Ofqual and will be used to standardise grades across centres in each subject. It will combine a range of evidence that includes expected grade distribution at national level, results in previous years at centre level and prior attainment profile of students at centre level. An important thing to note is it won't change the rank order of students within a centre and it will also not assume 
the distribution of grades in each subject and or centres should be the same. However, this does mean potentially the centre assessment grade could go up or down for some or all of the candidates within a centre. Looking at how and when to submit, the centre assessment grades must be signed off by at least two teachers in that subject, one of these being the head of department. There's only one member of staff in the department or there's only one member of staff available, the other person could be the head of centre. This is then confirmed and signed off by the head of centre as a true representation of student performance. The system for submitting the centre assessment grades and the rank order is currently being developed and there will be further news on this after Easter. You won't need to submit anything before the 29th of May, so you do have plenty of time to consider the evidence and consult with colleagues. You also won't be required to submit evidence of things such as performance or compositions. The window for submitting centre assessment grades and rank order will be open for at least two weeks. And one thing to note is you must not share the centre assessment grade or rank order of students with any students, parents or carers, or any individuals outside of the centre before final results have been issued. Now to consider the evidence that you might want to look at when coming up with centre assessment grades for A-level music. For performing, you can include any recordings of performances that you may hold within your centre. This could be any completed performances that have been produced for the NEA task. It could include any mock recordings that you have carried out within your centre as well. You may have had concerts within your centre and the recordings that you hold for these could be considered when looking at the centre assessment grade for any of your candidates. You may also have progress information and recordings from instrumental lessons and this could be considered for how a student has progressed on their instrument over the course of study. There is a principal examiner report from last year and this can help to understand the national picture in the component and there is also exemplar work available on the website to help understand the standard for the component. You should also consider this cohort compared with those in previous years. For composing, you can consider any completed compositions. This could be free or to a brief. You may have some candidates that have incomplete compositions at this point, but you can consider these and the progress and development that has been made on these over the course of study. You may have set tasks for classwork or homework for composition, and the responses that students have given here could be considered as well. Again, there is a principal examiner report to help understand the national picture, and there is exemplar work on the website to understand the standard set. You should also consider this cohort compared to any previous years. When looking at the appraising component, Many of you would have set mock exams and you can consider how students have performed in these. You should probably have progress review data on candidates 
and you can use this as well to consider how they may achieve in the exam. You may have completed classwork or homework from candidates and again this can be considered how they may respond to different types of questions and areas of study and their knowledge for the appraising component. There is the examiner report and this includes exemplar material with commentary to understand the responses to the different types of questions in the paper. And again, you should consider this cohort compared to any previous years. To come up with a centre assessment grade, you would need to bear in mind that students will generally achieve higher on any A task than in exams. Therefore, you shouldn't use just the NEA evidence when considering the centre assessment grade and you would need to balance your judgment about the candidate's likely performance in the exam. You should look at previous cohort achievement in your centre and it is also possible to look at the grade boundaries from previous years and the grade statistics from previous years to look at the distribution of grades at a national level. We'll now look at the process and review this in the context of A-level music. The first thing to do is use the evidence and your professional judgment to give a centre assessment grade to each student. Once this is done, you will then assign a rank order within each grade. In the example here, we have five candidates awarded a grade B. The candidate ranked one is the most secure candidate, moving down to number five, who is the least secure candidate. This is then approved by your head of department and your head of centre and submitted to the awarding organisation. There is a fourth step, which is the statistical standardisation process to finalise the grades. And this has the intention to issue grades in July 2020. There will be further details on submitting grades, issuing results, any appeals process, and the opportunity for sitting exams. And this should come out after Easter. In terms of next steps, you should make sure that entries are complete and correct. Start to consider the evidence that you have available uh, to make your decisions about the centre assessment grades and rank order. You can then work with colleagues to generate the centre assessment grade and the overall rank order. And then just remember, do not share any grades or rank order with students, parents or carers. Here are the links to the support portal and the community pages where you can submit any questions that you have. The slides for this session will be available to download as well. And I hope you have found this useful.